Do you like offense? Do you like the Astros getting 25 hits? Do you like the Astros scoring 17 runs? Is this a football game? I did a football draft this weekend, and it feels like it's football season, so why not score 17 runs? And we'll talk about this, and is Michael Brantley could be back on Tuesday. We'll discuss this and more on this episode of the Locked on Astros podcast. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Beer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Stros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Uh, Brett's uh, taking the night off, but th- this was a great weekend. I'm going to forget about Friday for a second, but um, we'll talk about Friday, what happened a little bit later. But guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen every day and become an everydayer. Somebody listens to our podcast, well, every day, and go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, go and check out the Locked On Astros podcast. And so we've got a lot to discuss today. The Astros win the last two games of the series. Hunter Brown, Justin Verlander followed um, Romer Valdez's uh, seven no-hit innings with some great efforts of their own. Uh, They only pitched five innings, but we'll talk about why a little bit later. Justin Verlander with his uh, 254th win. Uh, Hunter Brown made a little bit of adjustment. And is Michael Brantley going to be coming back on Tuesday? All signs point to yes, but we've been here before. It's kind of hard to get too super excited, but we do know that he's doing pretty well down in AAA. And so it all depends on how he feels. So Michael Brantley, tell me, how do you feel? Uh, do we need to go to uh, sit like I, I'm go ahead with a pen and paper? You go and sit on a couch and just tell us how you feel. I think it's a different type of feel, but it'll be good to have Michael Brantley back um, in the Astros lineup. The question is, who's the bats does it take away from? And we'll talk about this a little bit later. So welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode. And I'm excited to talk about the Astros on a winning streak because a three to four game losing streak sucks. And it, it sucks that you basically let the Mariners like shoot right past you. And the uh, last I looked, I don't know what happened with the Rangers, but uh, you like last I saw they were tied in the ninth inning. So let me look at today's game. And so the Twins, um, yeah, it's still tied in 10th inning. So we don't know what's going on with the Rangers, but we're, we're waiting for the Mariners. Last I checked, the Mariners were up one to nothing. But at this point, uh, the Astros can only do what they can do. They can only control their own destiny. And their destiny is going out there and winning every game. Uh, Like Alex Bregman said this weekend, uh, every game is a must win. You are at this point of the season where you can't afford to lose any more games. JP France, he had a crappy game the other day and uh, he gave up what, 10 runs. And this is something that we have not seen from him. So he will make that adjustment. I'm not worried about JP France, but I think that it it will be, it's a learning adjustment the league typically makes a adjustment to the pitcher and now it's up to jp france who's pitched great all year uh, he's been one of the most pinnable pitchers and i'm not going to freak out over one game now if it becomes a trend like we saw with hunter brown for a little bit then that's when you start to worry what what we've seen with from valdez that was a trend but what we saw on Friday, Friday with uh, from Valdez is a seven no hit innings. But he did have what the five walks. He had a lot of um, a lot, he threw a lot of pitches, and that's why he had to exit the game. And so uh, you see the pitching staff trying to round into form. But today's effort uh, was just great. Seventeen to four. The uh, the Tigers brought in basically two position players to pitch. Yiner Diaz c- came in and crushed the ball. Then it looked like 
uh, people's, uh, you remember Moises Alou, uh, they used to say, oh, he could just roll out of bed and just get a hit. That's what it looked like with Corey Jolks today. He just looked like he was just, he went up there, first pitch, swung, it, swung and got a single. Alvarez, same thing. It just looked like everybody was just going out there. And it's just like, um, it was just a situation where, the Astros were just having batting practice. And yes, a lot of those runs, they did score off a um, basically position player. Uh, Carson Kelly pitched in eighth inning. Then you had the um, short guy. I don't know his first name, but um, let's just call him short guy right now. But he allowed three runs in ninth inning. But overall, the Astros did score um, 10, uh, the seven other runs. So it, it wasn't just all about that so Carson Kelly um I it's amazing how these guys are catchers and they can throw like a, a laser to second base but when they become a pitcher it's like they they throw like soft pitch softball but it's still hard to make that adjustment as a major league guy so um but I it, today's game you had 25 hits I believe this is the fifth time they've done it they did it three times and I think it was 1979 or 76 um, and then they've done no they did it twice in those uh, in 1976 or 1979 I forgot the year but uh, then they've done it three times since 2019 um, so it's like they get to 25 hits and they're like okay yeah we can't get past that anymore but um, I thought that maybe today would be the day with uh, two position players. You can go and get past that 25 mark, but it's okay. Um, it's fine. It doesn't matter. You didn't need, uh, you were going station station at that point. You didn't, you, they weren't trying to score that many runs. It's like already embarrassment. The twin, the Tigers already only had five hits on the game. They scored four runs and yes, uh, Phil Maton came back from IL and he gave up the three runs. Unfortunately, uh, Miggy uh, had his 510th career home run, and it was off of Maton, who did return from the IL. But um, then you had Stanek come in and give up his uh, token home run. It seems like he's become a little bit more hittable recently, and that is something to be a little bit concerned about in the uh, long term in terms of the playoffs, but you've got to get to the playoffs. And right now, as uh, depending on what happens with the oh the Mariners are now up three to nothing versus the Royals, thank you Royals. Uh, you're forty one and ninety Royals. You can't even beat the Mariners. But uh, let's what's going on with the Rangers? Rangers are still tied. So, um, but you can't you can only control your own destiny at this point. Dusty Baker has to go out there with his best lineup. And on Saturday, you had your best your t best six hitters out there, and then the bottom three. Um, whatever, whatever you get from them is okay. Uh, so I think that uh, what we saw today was Jeremy Pena had a five hit game. And after the, the game he did, uh, Julia Morales did say, Hey, so did you talk to Jose Altuve about the five hit game? And he's like, uh, yeah, actually I said, uh, I got a five hit game before you did. And Altuve did the total veteran move and just said, yeah, okay. But kid, I have 2000 hits. And let me know when you get there. And so that's a typical um, veteran move there. So uh, overall, this was a great game. You had 25 hits. You had Bregman, two hits. Jolks off the bench with two hits. Alvarez with two hits. Tucker with two hits, including a home run. McCormick with three hits. Singleton with a hit. Uh, Pena with five hits. He's got his OPS all the way up to 702. His batting average back up to 256. I'm telling you, Jeremy Pena is go ahead and is going to become this guy that we saw last year, the one that struggles um, kind of midseason and then kind of picks it up uh, towards the end of the season and becomes hot in the playoffs and kind of covers the Astros throughout. Dubon, Mauricio Dubon golfed a home run into the, um, I was about to say the Crawford boxes, but not the Crawford boxes, but uh, out there in left field. And then you had uh, Martin Maldonado go back to back with Doobie and hit one off the foul pole. And so I was joking on Twitter. I said, uh, if you said the Astros had two players go back to back in this game, everybody would be like, is it Bregman Alvarez? No. Alvarez and Tucker? No. Uh, Tucker and McCormick? No. And then they'll be like, well, who? It would be Doobie and Martin Maldonado. But that was Doobie's seventh home run of the season, and that was Martin Maldonado's eleventh home run of the season. 
but overall um, it's, it was a great game. They did it with only three home runs. Tucker's was the big one because it gave them the early two to nothing lead. And with Verlander on the mound, yes, he threw a lot of pitches and I believe it was the third, second or third inning. He threw 31 pitches, but overall he, he only stayed in for uh, five innings 98 pitches. So I think what um, Dusty Baker is doing, yes, he's having to rely a little bit on his bullpen, but same time, uh, you, at, there's certain times where you're like, okay, he's, he's had a rough day. He's pitching uh, where he um, started his career in and it's been taxing and he had that long inning. So let's go and get him out. Let's get the bullpen in. And they did. And Montero came in and had a, a good inning. And so then the rest of the bullpen came in. Unfortunately, Maton and Stanek didn't have your back, our back in this. But sometimes everybody uh, gets in a situation where you need a little bit of money and you get in a situation where you kind of, uh, you, maybe your back's against the wall. You need some instant cash right now. So why don't you go to dave.com? Um, we all need a little help and maybe you need some cash in between paychecks and it'll be, uh, let's say you get your car towed, you park someplace you weren't supposed to. And you're like, Oh, nobody's going to tell me, or you have a vet bill, like your dog swallowed something they weren't supposed to. Or if you have a flat tire or you have to buy a new set of tires, Dave is there for you and finances can be so intimidating. That's why you need Dave. Dave can make managing your money so much easier with interest-free extra cash advances, fee-free goal tracking, and easy ways to uh, find a side hustle to make more money. Dave is a banking app that leveling up the playing field. When you download Dave, you can go up to get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. You can even build up credit while you're settled up on time. So if you're in a pinch, get the help you need by downloading Dave. Download Dave at dave.com slash MLB. That's dave.com slash MLB. And you could get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash MLB. So um, don't forget that the Astros will be playing the Red Sox, the Red Sox that basically took care of the Astros the other day at Fenway Park. It's going to be Christian Javier versus Chris Sale. And if you can't watch the game, go and uh, listen to it on Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search Astros and you can hear all the play by play coverage. And hopefully the Astros keep the winnings way, winning ways going there. So like I was saying uh, before the break, Jeremy Pena. If he's starting to get hot, this would be a great thing for the Houston Astros because he basically carried the Astros through the playoffs. And so I think that um, overall, if he can get hot and get him hit himself going, Bregman with the great game on Saturday, he had another great game today. His bat is starting to heat up. His OPS is, I think it's at, let me look real quick. I think it's at 804 right now. His batting average is at 261. Uh, he has um, 87 RBIs on the season, so he's starting to heat up. And uh, Bregman uh, typically gets uh, starts to heat up at the end of the season as well. So if you can get those two guys going, and Alvarez he's starting to get going as well, I think that you can have a much better offense. You don't have to rely on Kyle Tucker, who's still leading the AL in RBIs, so that's good. But um, I think that uh, if you're looking at offense, the past two games, they scored nine runs. They scored 17 runs. And I know everybody's going to be like, but what about Friday's game where they only scored, what, one run? And you had the one run lead uh, when Framer Valdez was throwing the no hitter into the seventh inning. And then uh, in the ninth inning, uh, you, you have. Uh, Presley gave up the three run homer to basically give him the lead uh, and win the game for them to uh, the walk off home run. Yes, that was a bad situation. And yeah, but if you're scoring more runs consistently, you wouldn't put Ryan Presley in that situation. And so it just, it was a series of bad luck in that game. And I think that that won't happen to Ryan Presley a lot, but unfortunately, the Astros bad luck in that little run right there 
against the Red Sox and against that the one game against the Tigers. It just maybe that just kind of hit a wall. And so uh, looking at that, uh, looking at um, what's going to happen with um, with this next series, this next series is going to be very big because I know the Astros did take care of the Red Sox in the first two games, but they got embarrassed in the, definitely the last game of the Red Sox series. Uh, but they did lose the last two games of the Red Sox series. So they, they've they got to go out there and win two or three games at Fenway Park, and they got to take care of business. And it, it takes um, – and they definitely need some help. Uh, but Justin Verlander, before we move on to um, Hunter Brown, Verlander did pitch five innings. He did have only allowed two hits, two walks, seven strikeouts. I believe he had a couple hit by uh, hit by pitches – yeah, Rogers got hit by a pitch, um, and also Carpenter. So he did hit two batters, but um, that was in that inning where he threw 31 pitches. And his ERA now is 3.06 on the season. He got his 10th win of the season, his 254th of his career, and his 100th at uh, what's that ballpark called? Uh, whatever, Comerica Park. Um, so that's uh, that's something that a lot of players don't get the honor of saying because they don't um, in this day and age, you don't have a lot of players that spent as much time as Justin Verlander did. So uh, we'll see what, I mean, I, hopefully Verlander does go back to the, to Detroit. Hopefully he stays with the Astros the rest of his uh, career. He went to a different team. He saw the grass was not greener on the other side. So maybe uh, he'll go ahead and try to find a way to stick it out with the Astros and get to 300 because that's where he's trying to get to right now. He's at 354. Um, so uh, we'll see if he can pitch long enough to get those extra, what, 48 wins, uh, sorry, 46 wins to uh, get to 300. And I think that he could. I think he's got, he's got the rest of the season. Uh, they're giving him the offense now, and then you got the one more year next year. And I'm sure that he can pitch one more year from uh, from that. So I think between that, you can go ahead and get those 46 uh, wins from there. So uh, Montero came in, did good. Neris did good. Phil Maton uh, came back. Uh, he did have one rehab appearance in AAA, but he's back. Um, Ronel Blanco was optioned down to AAA. Uh, what that means, though, is this is his fifth time coming up and going down which means the next time he comes up, he's going to have to be placed on waivers and another team can claim them. So if the Astros want to bring him up next time, they have to make that decision. Okay, do we want to risk losing him? Uh, so I know that he was crucial in yesterday's game. Uh, he did pitch two innings. Uh, at that point, the game was pretty much in hand, but um, the bullpen has also been taxed. You've seen them make very, uh, multiple roster moves over the past week just to get some fresh arms in here. So uh, we'll see what happens uh, from this point. But uh, Maton came back. He looked a little rusty. He allowed that home run to Miguel Cabrera. Like I said, it was his 510th of his career. And I love that when he was running around the bases, he kind of said something to Altuve. And Altuve said that uh, it's – uh, he said thinking about playing on the same field as Miguel Cabrera for the last time made him emotional. That last at bat he would see in person, uh, of course, Miguel Cabrera homework. So um, as Miguel Cabrera goes in, into retirement, you know, he's going to be rooting for uh, Jose Altuve to reach 3000 hits. And so Altuve with another, um, how many hits do you have today? He had another uh, hit today. He had two hits in a game of four. So he's going to keep on getting these hits. Um, he's all the way up to 314 and a 909 OPS. You have Alvarez, who's starting to creep up back to life. He's got a 279 batting average with a 928 OPS. Uh, so the Astros' offense is starting to creep up. And even Dubon, he's creeping back up to a 700 OPS with 698 with a three hit game. So um, I don't know how much Dubon's going to play. Uh, he did make an error kind of uh, filling in for uh, Bregman, but at the same time, uh, I don't, I'm not that worried about it. He hasn't played a lot of third base. So um, definitely this game was great. If you're looking at Saturday's game, you had Hunter Brown on the mound and he made a big adjustment. And I've been talking about um, rookies, the difference between rookies and sophomores. And sometimes during a rookie season, the, uh, 
the league makes the adjustment to you. And it's about making that adjustment and kind of figuring out, okay, this ain't working. So what can we do to fix it? And in second, we'll talk about what, um, what Hunter Brown did to make that adjustment. And also we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about Michael Brantley returning back to the lineup. Hopefully fingers crossed because we have heard this before, but I do need to talk to you about uh, sleeper and sl this episode is brought to you by sleeper. And so sleeper is a, a fantasy app. It's just something that's become the um, it's, something that's out there. It's just fun to do. You can go pick your team, swing for defenses and on the sleeper picks, and you can win up to a hundred times your money. Use the promo code lock on and sleeper will match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. Predict the hottest baseball stats like home runs, five hit games like Jeremy Pena. Who would have predicted that uh, strikeouts and much more to cash in on your daily fa fantasy baseball skills. Use the promo code locked on and sleep room match your first deposit up to $100. First time depositors can receive up to a 100% instant deposit matched up to $100 using the promo code locked on. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on upon, upon signing up for an instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Swing for the pen, fences with promo code locked on at sign up and you'll get up a deposit match up to a hundred dollars and make sure that you, you know that you can win up to a hundred times your payouts. You can uh, get, you can enter into multiple contests and you could just, uh, there's more stat categories coming home runs triples stolen bases whatever dynamic payouts are out there and just go ahead and uh, make your entries you can do it in 30 seconds or less so go and check it out and go and tell them locked on astros sent you by and while you're watching a game go and check out hooters hooters is the place to be i know brett and i are going to do another live broadcast coming up in september and uh, we just like going there i love the curly fries i'm kind of going back and forth between what type of chicken I like i like the roasted um, chicken wings sometimes sometimes i like just the plain um just eating just plain chicken tenders with some, with some either hot sauce some three mile island um but also the brew uh, and just the world famous hooters girl so why don't you go check out your your local Hooters. It doesn't have to be the one at NASA. There's several around town. I, in fact, I go drive everywhere around Houston. There's always a Hooters nearby. So go find one. Hooters has specials every day of the week. Monday is BOGO wings. Tuesday is 999 um, burgers and fries. Wednesday is BOGO boneless wings. Thursday is 1999 wings and big daddy bundles. Friday is 1983 crab legs and Saturdays and Sundays kids eat for free. Who's ready for a good time? Happy Hooters has happy hours Monday through Friday from 2 to 7 and 10 p.m. to close. So join them anytime for $3 Blue Moon Drafts or $9.99 Michelob Ultra Pitchers. And starting uh, September 17th, 7th at the NASA Hooters, they'll be having karaoke. I know jo Brett keeps on joking that I'll be there. I'll be there as much as I can. I do love karaoke. And also uh, come hang out where the Locked On Astros boys like to hang out and watch the Astros with great grub and brews. Ask them what their featured beer is on tap and tell them that the boys at Locked On Astros sent you by. All right. So we know that Hunter Brown has not been great recently, um, but he did make that adjustment. And the Astros need to make an adjustment this um, upcoming series versus Red Sox. If you can't watch them, Go and uh, check out SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Astros. You can hear all the play-by-play -play coverage. But he, you know that he grew up kind of modeling the Justin Verlander way of pitching. And so I think that it's, it seems like it's still 5-5 five, five and top the 12th inning for the Rangers versus Twins. Go Twins. Um, go. Car I don't know if Carlos Correa is playing. but um, So Hunter Brown... Grew up idolizing Justin Verlander, but in this case, maybe that wasn't a good thing for him, or maybe the league kind of adjusted to uh, what, how he pitched, and maybe he just uh, needed a change. So he did make a, a change before Saturday's game, and so uh, it was um, something less Justin Verlander-like. 
and it was just more something a little bit different. So what happened was he, he began to wind up with his body facing home plate and glove raised in front of his face. Then starting his rotation, rotation Brown brought his hands down to belt height, then back up to his ear before separating them to deliver a pitch. So that was um, kind of what he was doing. So it was a little bit different than what he uh, was doing before. And after a game, Brown said that he made some adjustments that hopefully in the long run will allow him to execute his pitches at a higher rate. It just cleans up the timing is the number one thing. Just like hitting, if you're on time as a pitcher, you can move around the ball a lot easier. And we saw a lot better performance from Hunter Brown on Saturday. He had the nine strikeouts. He, 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 was only, he only pitched for five innings. And I believe he was at 90-something pitches. But I think that Dusty Baker probably at this point, they're trying to monitor how many innings he throws. And so I think that was of some consideration because he has already passed his previous high in innings. So um, they're probably monitoring his innings. And so um, Miller, the pitching coach, said that uh, I think we've been talking about the adjustment a little bit. Um, oh, this is Brown, actually. We've been talking about the um, adjustment a little bit, just help my timing. But I think after the Seattle outing, it was just a little bit more urgent to allow me to go out there and have success for our team. And then Miller said, we talked about the delivery, just trying to shore up the consistency of it. Didn't think it, it was that drastic changes were necessary after that last start. Just kind of went back to a drawing board. And um, most, most of all, it was him being willing to try something different. He said most times pitchers uh, tr trying to change their delivery midseason, it's kind of hard. But in this case, it wasn't that hard for him. And uh, so he gave a lot of props to Hunter Brown for being able to make that adjustment. And as a rookie pitcher, especially going from what he was at a, I believe he was at a 3.35 ERA through his first 13 st starts. And then he um, went to a 4.50 ERA. He had to make some type of adjustment. And so props to him for knowing that something needs to change. Does that mean he's always going to be successful? No. But this is a positive step forward. If we see this type of Hunter Brown in the playoffs, the Astros are going to have their number three or number four guy, depending on what the other guys do. So we'll see what happens. So um, definitely uh, something to look at. It looks like the Rangers just took the lead in the 12th inning. So um, now it's up to the, I believe, the Twins. Um, yeah, the Twins still have a, a bat. So we'll see if the Twins can go and score this again. And the Mariners are up three to nothing still in the seventh inning. So it looks like the Astros may not gain any ground despite winning this the uh, last two games. But that's what baseball is. The Rangers are on the six game, uh, or like what was an eight game losing streak or something. So and then they they go ahead and win two in a row. So baseball is baseball. You don't know what's going to happen. The Astros have to control their own destiny and their own destiny is Michael Brantley coming back to the lineup. And I know that this is something that um, we thought was going to happen last week. We thought that there's a chance he could be playing with um, against the Tigers, but um, we did have Dana Brown today on sports talk 790 saying the next step is joining the team on the road trip. Then hopefully we can see him maybe potentially in the lineup by Tuesday. We're really feeling good about him coming back. Man, uh, Dusty Baker did say, we'll just have to wait and see how he feels. Uh, Brown did say after his recent minor league games, there's no discomfort. There's no pain. He feels really good. And, oh, what a joy it would be to get that bat back in the lineup. So this is not including a, um, his game on Sunday. Uh, this most recent games, he's 8 for 23 with three extra base hits four walks and no strikeouts. He's played in back-to-back -back games twice, both as a left fielder in the first game and as a DH in the second. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I think that uh, we'll see him likely back with the Astros, maybe as soon as tomorrow. Will he be back on in the lineup? I don't know. I think Tuesday is a probably a good fit, but it's, uh, it's up to Dusty. Uh, Dana Brown um, can say what he wants to say, but I think that, 
Uh, Dusty Baker typically likes to give a player that extra day. But at this point, like Alex Bregman say, says, every game is a must win. And Michael Brantley, you're already not going to start him in back-to-back games. He's going to be every other type player until probably the, the playoffs. So m- might as well just bring him back up and just play him on Tuesday, let him rest on Wednesday, then play him again uh, once he uh, once you play again on Friday and just see what happens. But just imagine this light lineup with Michael Brantley in the lineup, another left-hand hitter. Uh, he, he's Mr. Professional Hitter for a reason. and But I'm sure Corey Jolks, even though he got two hits off um, position players, I think that he will be the one going down. Uh, Greg Kessinger was activated off the IL, and uh, he's playing for the AAA Space Cowboys today. So, but I think that Corey Jolks will be the one going down. Uh, Mauricio Dubon showed that he can play. I mean, we all know that he can play the infield. So likely he'll, that's what he'll be. He'll be the reserve, the infield reserve guy, except for when Justin Verlander is pitching because he is the designated center fielder. So um, like I mentioned already, tomorrow's game, it's going to be Chris Sale versus Christian Javier. Uh, Both pitchers have a relatively high ERA, but um, it's up to Javier to basically, yes, he went five innings last time, but he's just got to be more consistent, get, get some more um, oomph on his fastball and just get back to the Christian Javier that earned him that extension. And if he does, the Astros rotation will be good. So I, uh, Chris Sale, uh, he didn't go that deep in the last game, but this um, with his the way he delivers the ball, it's a little bit funky. I know the Astros have seen him quite a lot over the years, but uh, this will be definitely an interesting matchup, and um, we'll see. We'll have to listen to oh, uh, to Sweet Caroline. I hate that song, by the way, because of uh, the playoffs a few years ago. But anyway, that's all I got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. Um, Hopefully, Michael Brantley will be back soon. That would be a great edition. And my name is Eric Eisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Jockstros. You can find the show at Lockdown Astros. Brett will be back uh, tomorrow. And hopefully the Astros uh, will be will be talking about a win tomorrow as well. And don't forget to check out um, uh, the Astros play on SiriusXM. Go and download the SXM app and search Astros. And just listen to all the play-by-play coverage. Uh, and we will see you tomorrow. And go Strokes. Where is it?